Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's Friday Morning Ramblings, I'm going to show you everything that's coming up in the garden, talk about seeding, some different ways that you can drop seeds and direct sow. We'll go to my winter sowing area, show you what's coming up, and we'll finish up actually up in um, the house by my grow lights. I want to give you an update on some of the things that are growing there. Today's video is, is sponsored. This is sponsored by Sow Perfect Seeder, and this is just one method that you can direct sow. And this is wonderful if you have difficulty with small seeds, you know, dexterity problems, um, concerned about spacing. Sow Perfect Seeder works extremely well. I will show you more about this at the end of the video, video if you want to see how it works. Generally speaking, when I'm planting, and if you look in here too, this is the alfalfa pellets. It's fine if you mix your alfalfa pellets in like this, you can direct sow pretty much right away. I do recommend waiting 30 days, but when I first put it down, it looks like that. And you wouldn't want to put seeds right into that because it's, it's just too concentrated of materials that need to break down. So your seedlings and your seeds will be challenged for nitrogen. But once you mix that into the top four inches of the soil, you're pretty much good to go. So I pretty much plant really two ways. I either just put a line right down the middle. I don't worry about if it's a quarter inch, half an inch pea seeds to go a little bit deeper. And I would just take the seeds out and drop them in, cover them up. Or I do finger holes. That's in my book. I might do a spacing like that. I pretty much say that's two inches or three inches. Everything looks the same. Plants don't care that much about spacing. And then I would just drop the seeds in and cover it over. If you're using the So Perfect Seeder, I am using one hand here. You would just move the seeds over the holes, move it back, and then you have the spacing for pea seeds, and you can just drop it right into where you're going. And it leaves just a nice spacing of pea seeds covered over, you're good to go. I'll show you more about this at the end of the video. One of the things that I did was I moved any crops that survived the winter over to one space. They're a little bit beat up, but I just dug them up, moved them over here. They all got some fish emulsion. I can take care of them. And this way I didn't have survivors all throughout my garden. I can just concentrate them there. And then I was able to open up the rest of the garden for future plants. Let's go over here before we go inside. So winter sowing. I just did a video about really germinating your seeds inside, really let them just break the surface and then you take them outside during the day, bring them in at night, it works really well. And one of the questions people ask me, is that better than winter sowing? Well, these have been here for at least eight weeks. So because they're staying out in the cold and there was frost and these are winter crops, they can take the, the, the frost. They just didn't germinate as quickly until it got warmer. So if you want to do winter sowing, it's wonderful. You just set up your flats, put them outside. When the temperatures are right, they all will sprout and very quickly they're going to get to size and these will be great to go into the garden in about two weeks. If you want to do that um, sort of a little bit like winter sowing, but you're bringing your plants in at night, it is a little bit of work. By bringing your seed starts in at night, the warmth in the house really stimulates root growth. The plant germinates quickly. The plants get a nice jump, get a nice kind of jump so that you're not waiting around for weeks for your winter sown seedlings to start. Really in about five to seven days, they'll germinate in your house. You just bring them out during the day. The seed starts to grow. You bring them at night. They stay warm. You get seed starts really, really quickly. And I just wanted to clarify that. It just depends on how quickly you need your seed starts and you know, deciding on how you want to grow them. So in my garden, I have a couple plants remaining. They were covered in white flies. I treated them with different things. The white flies are dead. If I see the white flies this week, I'm just going to pull them out. I just, as much as I love second year kale flowering, as much as I love the buds, I just don't want to have a white fly problem. problem. So I would remove everything, get rid of the white flies, and I'll just start over. Sometimes if you have an infestation, plants can't be saved. Do your best, but when you get to that point where it's just not worth it, remove the plants, replace the plants. But I think I did win this battle. Let's go ahead inside here and I'll show you what I'm growing. I'm in Maryland zone 7. Today's 74. Four days ago it was 19 degrees at night. We had snow maybe five days ago. So the temperatures are going to fluctu fluctuate. We're going to get frosts. When it's this warm I get tempted to put out warm weather crops and stuff. You just can't do it. 
I love putting out first, I've done a video on this, radishes. These went out on March 1st. Again, today is March 18th. I like putting out radishes, spinach, and peas. Direct sow them, let them do their thing, and you know, they're up now 14 days later. They just sprouted over the last three days. These were all done with the finger hole method, you know, spacing whatever I feel is appropriate. And I just put in the finger holes, drop in the seeds, cover them over. I have spinach in there. And then the peas are just starting to pop up. That's my first wave of peas. I also have some in here. These are purple potted. And I don't know if you can see one in here right there. But these are all, were all put in on March 1st, 17 days later, they're just starting to come up. They took that 19 degree freeze. There was three inches of snow on all of these, perfectly fine because of the cool weather crops. But because it's cold, it took 17 days for them to, to germinate. If I started these inside, you know, watch them just break the surface. As soon as they break, broke the surface, I would take them outside during the day and bring them in at night. The peas would be up already after five or six days. That's a way to speed up the process. You grow the transplants that way, and then you bring them out here, drop them into the ground, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about your cold temperatures slowing down germination. A lot of germination is based on the temperature of the soil, and that kind of really, you know, basically helps govern how the roots develop and grow and how quickly things germinate. It's really the top couple inches of soil. When that gets to the right warmth, your seeds germinate. This is arugula. The arugula, well, this is pak choy, went in on 3.6. I see a little bit of that coming up now. This is arugula. That's all coming up. Pak choy, arugula, I recommend seeding directly into the soil. They sprout quickly. They deal with cold weather well. If you grow these as seed starts, because it's warm in your house, because the roots are staying warm, they flower really quickly. So sometimes your arugula will go right to flowering, your pak choy goes right to flowering, you don't get big heads of the Chinese cabbage that way. That's the difference. So when you're doing cool weather crops in your house, lettuce, spinach, pak choy, bok choy, arugula, it's so warm, they're ready to get to flowering because they're not getting the cold like you do in the early spring. So they very quickly go to flowering and blooming and all that. So you might wonder why are my lettuce plants so tall and leggy? I'm giving them plenty of light. Why do all my cool weather crops really look tall and that they're falling over? They have plenty of light. It's because it's the warmth. That warmth is really speeding up growth. So I kind of think now, after 20 years of doing this, most of my cool weather crops, I'm going to start indoors. Once they break the surface, I'm going to move them in and out side during the day. If the nights don't fall below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, four and a half degrees Celsius, I will leave them outside. I want that cold to sort of regulate the growth of my cool weather crops so that they're stocky, they're strong, they're not going to flower, and then I can bring the transplants out. Hope that makes sense. And in here I have a bib lettuce, and I think that's a weed <laughs> right in there. I don't see that coming up yet. So there's definitely strategies how you want to start your different crops. Winter sowing is wonderful for the cool weather crops. That hybrid mix that I was talking about outside during the day, you bring them in at night, works really well for cool weather crops. That will also work for your warm season crops. It will work for tomatoes. Being indoors at night, the warmth of the night inside your house will stimulate the growth of the peppers, the tomatoes, the eggplant, tomatillos, and you can really you know, start your seeds that way. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been annoyed with Bonnie plants because they were selling a single lettuce plant, a single kale plant, a single cabbage plant, single broccoli plant, a couple of pieces of spinach in a container for $4.78. That is just way too expensive. No one should pay $5 for a single lettuce plant or a broccoli plant. If you want to, that's fine, but that's just too much money. So I wanted to give people a lot of options on how you can start seeds indoors. You don't need the fancy grow lights that I'm gonna show you at the end. Mine aren't even fancy, they're just shop lights. But you don't need grow lights. You can just, and I'm gonna say it maybe for the 10th time, you can put seeds in a flat, move them outside during the day when the temperatures are over 40 degrees, over four and a half Celsius. 
let them do their thing, bring them in at night, let them enjoy the warmth of the house. You can grow any seed start that way, save yourself a ton of money, and I won't talk about that anymore. Right in here is where I'm going to put my new kale plants. That's why I'm not worried about having to remove those plants if it doesn't work out well. I do want to zip this up. That's a mistake. Let me just close it over. I can't zip that with one hand. So I did a neem oil drench in here just to kill out any remaining possible insect, insect eggs, grubs, any kind of problems. Neem oil drench will help reduce that. Put the cover on top right after that. I want this to be bug free. My leafy, uh, my kale will go in here. It's a leafy green. My kale will go in here. This is what I did last year. Didn't love the look of the dome, but I was able to grow kale in here without any problems from the white moth, white butterfly, I apologize, uh, laying eggs on there, hatching the green cabbage worm or the green worms that devastate your leafy greens, especially kales and the brassica family. So I'm gonna do this again. Four kale plants, four kale plants, protected by this ag fabric. This, and I'm sure people will ask, this is a canopy that went over fruit trees. I had to do this last year when I had um, cicadas. So I'm just gonna you know, use these as much as I can because they were a bit expensive. But basic ag fabric, water goes through, sun goes through, bugs stay out. My other strategy this year is to just grow what is hard to get so for instance, I'm growing some carrots, but carrots are pretty inexpensive. I'm growing lettuces, but I'm only growing two types. I'm really growing red lettuce, a ruby lettuce, and some bib lettuce. I really like both of those. I'm not doing romaine, oak leaf, other leaf lettuces. I just, I just don't use them. It's much cheaper for me to buy a couple heads of romaine, mix in my red lettuces, mix in my bib lettuces, mix in my kales, and you know have a wonderful salad i don't even need to go out to the store actually i can use the bib lettuce the ruby red lettuce kales spinach i love spinach is all over my point being is you really want to think about what are you going to enjoy plant that number one and number two if something is inexpensive at the grocery store Sometimes it's better just to buy that and then concentrate your efforts on other crops that are more expensive or that you just can't find in the grocery stores. So really, two kinds of lettuce, spinach, I'm good to go. Spinning around this way, I've started setting up different beds. This one is going to be more for cool weather crops right now. Peas, leafy greens, all in this section. Right in here, I have my root crops, which we'll get to in a second. I did plant in there. This area I just cleaned up. These are prop cu cucumber plants. They aren't gonna really make it. At some point we're gonna have frosts. I'm gonna try and save them. I'm gonna plant some, put some plastic domes or glass domes over them, see if I can have them survive. But just to be clear, it's way too early here in Maryland Zone 7. These really shouldn't go out until the end of April. But I built this trellis, 10 foot trellis. This is where my cucumbers are gonna go. This section, right in here, are going to be cucumbers. Cucumbers to the left, cucumbers to the right, cucumbers up this cattle panel. Come in with my sprays, my pruning, my harvesting. All the cucumbers are in one space. The only place where I'm going to mix things up, and it's because I'm going to do a teaching videos on it, if you want to pick up fabric pots, these are root pouches. We sell them at my seed shop, all different sizes. I'm going to be planting a full garden in there. So I will have all different kinds of plants in there. In fact, just to show you, a couple of ways to grow peas. These are tomato cages. So I put in um, Cascadia peas in here on 316. They get about three and a half feet tall. The tomato cages are perfect. And I just put one, two, three seeds around each of these prongs, nine plants, That'll be 18 plants if they all come up. Delicious peas right there. This is another space. Um, if you have fabric pots, you can start doing this. Right along there, peas, same variety. Went in on 316. I did them about an inch apart, um, a little bit more, just like the spacing I actually on the So Perfect Cedar that I showed you. And I just dropped the pea on the surface, pushed it in a half an inch with my finger. Plenty of peas will be coming up here. And then I put beets in here too. So the beets will come up, the peas will come up. When these are done, 
Maybe I'll be putting in peppers or tomato plants or the warm season crops. But this is all about to get cleaned out, you know, a little bit at a time. Ran out of wood chips, but I got a lot done, so I'm happy with that. Let's step across here. This is going to be my root crop area. This is the area I was telling you about that I built um, last year. Had the asparagus in here. Didn't need all that asparagus. I was wasting space. These are purple top turnips that survive the winter. And on 3-6, I'll be doing a video on these too, but I put in my turnips. You know, and using your fingers, you know, I was dropping way too many seeds. It's, it's hard to, you know, drop the right amount of seeds sometimes using just your fingers, but I will thin those down. Turnips, 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 purple top, absolutely delicious. Over here are uh, golden ball turnips. They're yellow with kind of an orange flesh inside. Everything root crop is going to be in here. A couple of carrots back there, little finger carrots there. Kohlrabi, root ball forms above the ground. I'm going to be doing a whole bed of that, but this is the first wave going in. Those are dark beets, uh, Detroit dark. These are heirloom golden beets, and these are Chioga, I guess. <laughs> I can never pronounce anything. Beets too. Different colors, different shapes. Delicious. Tall top, early wonder beets in here, different variety. And right in there are some rutabagas, which are purple tops. Look like purple top turnips, except their flesh is yellow. Root crops all in here, so it'll be nice. It'll be a nice space, hopefully, but it'll be very easy for me to just come in here, pick out the different root crops that I want, feed them, tend them, all in one location. They're not, you know, all over my garden where I have to bounce around. And this bed is finely defrosted. That's going to be some more root crops. Maybe that will be all kohlrabi. And then right in there is my asparagus. This area is where I'm going to be growing peppers. But I also put in um, snow peas, the flat pods like you find in Chinese food. Put these in two days ago. And again, I just put in, really, I would just do one seed, two seed, three seed, and then I push them in a half an inch. So there's nine seeds here, nine, 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 all the way down. But it's one, two, three, four, five, six times nine, 54 pea plants. They can stay in here. When I drop in my pepper transplants, I think they'll be perfectly fine. A little bit of an experiment. But why not maximize your space rather than me waiting till the end of April, early May to put you know, my pepper plants in, let me start growing peas. If they're still growing through May, which they will be, pepper plants will just be coming up. They're gonna be able to coexist. And I'm really getting, you know, double production out of here of two different crops. Now is the time to have fun. Redesign your garden, think about the plantings, experiment, you know, just enjoy yourself. This is something I showed uh, people how to make last year, corrugated um, plastic polycarbonate and you can check out my channels for more videos but if I kept this off right here it will warm up nicely in here seeds will germinate more quickly I'll be putting some things in here I don't know if I'll be doing spinach if I'll be trying to get some summer crops going early but this is just a nice mobile way it just picks up you move it around this comes off this pops out I mean it's a very easy design and then you use a bungee cord just because if the wind comes, you don't want this to be lifted and blown out. But this is a great way to make basically a cold frame that gets really hot, warms up the soil. You can start things at least a month early inside of here. You just have to keep an eye on it because today is 75. If the plants had come up in here, I had this capped off, 75 sunny, it's going to get so hot in here, it could damage the plants. So you do have to pay attention not only to the cold when you're planting, also, if you're using something like this, you have to pay attention to how hot, it, how hot it gets because plants could bake inside of there. Let's come back around here. Just did a trellising video, so I'm not going to talk about them today. So, beets, root crops, will extend out to here. Peas are right in there, kind of blending over from my pea plantings being mostly over there. Cucumber plants will go where the peas are. And that's how I'm going to transition this whole space over. But I have, what do I have in there? So those are shelling peas. They're called First 13. That's a new variety that I'm testing out just for fun. 
Uh, cherry Bell radishes, love radishes, more uh, cylinder beets, the cylindrical type, golden Detroit beets, and then more shelling peas right in there. So I've kind of maximized this footprint here with the cool weather plants with somewhat of a plan to replace them as the season progresses. But you get the idea. In the past, I would have peas here, I would have some peas over there, I would have some kale over there, I would have some kale down over this way, and I was always like having to move around and move my sprays around. And I thought, well, why are you doing that? That just doesn't make sense. Slowly getting the beds ready. This bed, I didn't turn, even though the shovel's in there, because I turned that bed. So I just left the leaves that were on here, worked them in with my hand to the top couple of inches. I'll be planting right in there. Some of my beds I turn, some of them I don't. Don't be afraid to turn your bed. There's nothing wrong with it. These had compost dropped on them. This one was not turned, just dropped compost on there. This one was turned, dropped compost in there. You know what? The worms don't care. The soil life doesn't care. I feel good about the beds. I think plants are gonna do really well. Let's come down here because I have more growing. Radishes coming up right in there. I put in some peas along the back. Again, those are going to be replaced with cucumbers eventually. And if the peas are still going, I'm still going to drop my cucumber plants in there. I might have to remove a couple pea plants. But as the cucumbers take off, the peas will be dying back. They can coexist. More radishes in there. These were put in on March 4th. So my radishes have gone in at different times over the last two weeks. I will let all these grow now for a good two weeks before I put in the next round because I want to make sure I'm not having a thousand radishes come up at once. And it's really about when they break the surface. Just because, say I put these in on March 1st and then I put some plants in, some seeds in on March 10th, if these seeds didn't germinate, it, they're not 10 days older. They're just sitting in there cold. And then as we got that warm weather a couple days ago, the stuff that I put in on March 1st germinates, the stuff that I just put in on the 10th germinate, they count as being planted at the same time. And you're going to get all the radishes, everything that germinates, no matter when it was put in the ground, if they germinate together, they're going to be ready to harvest together. And you just don't want to be stuck with a thousand radishes. So you want to really stagger the plantings. I want to stress this again because I feel it's really important when you're buying bagged products. So this is Garden Pro. I have nothing for or against that company. It says compost and manure right in there. 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Um, there's radishes. I'm sorry, there's spinach that was actually under that corrugated plastic. So I used that over the winter to get these germinated and going. And you can see the outline around there. These are doing well. I took it off. They're cool weather crops. And I mean, look at all the spinach that I have. So when you look at this product, this is all out of that bag. It is mostly wood chips. That is not, that is not compost. That is not manure. That is wood chips. This is not even close to being broken down. Um, and if you want to buy something like this, that's fine. But you really want to buy one bag of your manures, one bag of your composts. Check it out. And if you like what it is, buy more. But don't get fooled into buying 10 bags of something without really checking it out. This is mostly wood, you know, and it looks like sand and probably mixed in there for legal reasons, there is some compost and some manure, but it's mostly wood and dirt, right? All right, let's go over to the other side of the garden. Actually, let's walk up this way. So here's some kale that I just threw in this bed. So it's over here. Give you an idea. Got garden over there. Have some kale growing in here. Don't even remember why I stuck it in there. Got all that garden space over there. Outside that gate is where I'm transplanting different crops that survive the winter. So this kale is going to come out. You just dig a big root ball around it, take it to the place you want, dig out a hole, drop it in, give it a ton of water, some fish emulsion. But I want all this kale in one place because this could be a place where I forget about it, white flies, 
take hold, they infest it, they spread to the rest of my garden. Part of moving these plants and cleaning out the beds is really to kind of clean up your garden, know what kind of problems are there, and then I can treat all the kale because it's over there in case anything, you know, arrives or shows up. First it's having kale over there, some right below me, some over there. And this is about as far as I got with setting up the beds. So I'll start working down here. I want to show you another space real quick. Then maybe we'll go upstairs. I want to show you the blueberries too. So this kind of, I use dirt in here to fill up my towers over here. These are green stock towers. Strawberries, by the way, they are doing really well. Just did a video on that. They're coming in nice and strong. So it's going to be beautiful. This is all going to be strawberries over here. And then this is actually spinach I transplanted from different parts of my garden and I'll be growing peppers in there. But these are the green stock garden towers. So this got pretty low. I don't want to use all my compost that I made to fill this bed up. I want to spread it out. So I purchased bags of leaf grow and the leaf grow is one product that I've tested and I, I love. If you have leaf grow, you definitely want to use it in my opinion. This is made in Maryland at Montgomery County. And when you cut this open, it's exactly what it says. It's leaf product, it's organic matter, it's beautiful. You've seen it throughout my garden as I was walking around in some places. But this looks like my compost and my leaf mold that I made. This is good stuff. This is quality stuff. Not a ton of nutrients, great organic matter for soil life, great organic matter for breaking up heavy soil holding water, it does feed the soil life, will feed your plants, but it's just a beautiful product. So I decided to buy this. I'll fill my tomato bed up with that, clean this all out. I'll be growing probably tomatoes and peppers in here again. All right, now let's go to the other side of the garden. I'll show you some things on this side real quick, then we'll go upstairs. I'll show you how my seed starts are doing. Strawberries are doing well, people have been asking. Just want to show these again. This I made, I have a video on it. But it's only what? Maybe six inches deep, four inches wide. These are all radishes. I never harvested them. I wanted to see how long they would go into the winter. But you only need like this much earth and these are all French bre breakfast radishes. So these will be all planted up with radishes again. So even if you have a small garden, small space, you can do something like this. Three rows of radishes and you could probably do this three times in Maryland's own seven radishes from germination are ready anywhere from 25 to 40 days. So they uh, grow really quickly and you can put in sometimes three plantings. Plants in here are doing really well. I'll be taking care of the blueberries. They're coming back strong, very much uh, damaged by the cicadas last year. So were all of my fruit trees, very sad. But they're coming back. These are all gonna get a drink of nitrogen, help them go, uh, get going. And then I'll be putting down either sulfur vinegar, something to increase the acidity. Blueberries like more acidity and each spring I give them a little more acid, so to speak, to lower the pH, make it more acidic and they seem to thrive and do better in there. In this space, I have to fix that because it won't close, but in this space, it stays nice and warm down there. So I'm gonna clean that up and I'm gonna be putting my peppers in here in April, letting them harden off grow, get to size. Some of them will go into pots like that. But this area, because it goes into the ground, has the cold frame over top. Even when it gets down to 20 degrees, 15 degrees, well below freezing, it stays warm in there because the earth down there regulates it. So I'll be able to harden off the peppers in here. I will show you them upstairs. Some of them are getting pretty big because I started them early for videos and I always like to kind of do different kinds of experiments. And maybe we'll just stop here. Well, let me show you. I mean, this blueberry plant is doing really, really well. Got the blackberries in the back. But this is going to be tons of blueberries. And I feel like I'm going to have to build some sort of cage over this that I can walk into. Because I feel like now, year four, the birds are going to start to catch on and they're going to be taking the blueberries and the blackberries, but I'll worry about that later. If you have a good eye, you can see my garlic's coming up in those containers. 
this will be the last part of my garden that I get into shape because the blueberries do just fine. But the ones in there are really small and beat up. The cicadas, you know, did a number on them, but they'll come back and I don't have to worry about them for another 17 years. Hopefully I'm still on the planet. Strawberries doing really well. Highly recommended towers. I showed you that a little bit uh, earlier in the video, but they're just popping up everywhere. And these are just crowns that I transplanted into here. I also dropped some of the runners into there. You don't have to spend money and buy every single strawberry plant if you want to save some money. You know, they can be expensive, but you have six pockets up here, six pockets here. Maybe buy 12 plants or 18 plants. Let them do their thing. They're going to send out runners, and then you can propagate the lower compartments with the runners, and then you save yourself some money. After a year, this will be filled with strawberries, and you only had to spend money to fill, you know, a third of them or maybe a half of them. All right, space will be all cleaned up. These pepper seeds I could actually save. You know, I can just open them up, take the pepper seeds out, even though they sat out here for a year, they're protected, that's what nature does. I think these are shishito peppers. Don't know if they were a hybrid or not, I don't think so. But I'm gonna harvest some of these seeds, see if I can get them to grow. All right, let me go show you what's under the grow lights, how well they're doing. We're on my back porch. This is the flat that I started indoors, just let them germinate. And now they are going outside during the day, coming in at night, and it's a perfect way to grow really 36 lettuce plants, 36 spinach plants, no grow lights needed. And if we slowly spin around here, these are bags of potatoes. So I'll be putting my potatoes into the ground um, probably this weekend, actually. Here are the plants under the grow lights. They're doing really well. Peppers over there, they need to be potted up. Some eggplant peppers right in there different herbs. Wanted to show people the strawberries. I had lots of questions. They're doing really well. They're my alpine strawberries. They need to get acclimated to the outdoors, so I'll be potting them up, getting them used to the weather over the next seven days or so. Look how good the artichokes are doing. They'll be ready to go out soon. More peppers that have to get potted up. Herbs, eggplant right down there. Things are going really, really well. I'm even going to try and save these tomato plants by putting them in containers and putting them into the cold frame where I showed you how it sinks into the ground. But you know, overall, things have been really successful. Grow lights definitely work, and I guess I'm not done saying it. I want to encourage people to start their own seed starts. You don't need, even need to buy all this plastic stuff. I sell that at my seed shop if you want it, but you can just get a foil pan like this, fill it with soil, peppers, kale in there, this could be moved out during the day again, in at night. Grow your own transplants. Pennies a plant save some money. Here are some potatoes that have been chitting inside. That's C-H-I-T-T-I-N-G. And that means they've put out some of the green growth. These are ready to go in the ground tomorrow, actually. And then finally, here are the big peppers that are ready to go outside into that space. So I have a lot going on. Very excited that it is now 74 degrees in my area. I know that the frost is going to come, so stay patient. Don't rush all your plants out there. Every year I do that. Every year Mother Nature says, hey, why'd you do that? So this year I'm going to practice what I preach. And please hang on because I'll show you more about the So Perfect Cedar at the end of this video. Again, I do recommend that if you have trouble, you know, man manipulating the smaller seeds or you want help with spacing seeds when you're planting them. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and certainly get some seeds planted now. Start growing indoors. Just enjoy yourself. Have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. The So Perfect Seed is pretty straightforward. It comes with wands. Each wand has different size holes in there. The handles are labeled. It comes with information to tell you what side of the uh, handles to use for different seeds. Helps you with spacing. Will help you if you have trouble, you know, manipulating the smaller seeds like you saw in the video earlier that I had like two, three seeds in different holes. Even though I like to just do finger holes, sometimes it's hard just to drop one seed in there. You drop in the different seeds. This side is really set up for peas. The wand comes out, the peas are in place, and you would I would recommend doing the rows first, of course, but you just put in where you want the peas to go, take your wand, drop them in, and they line up perfectly. I just added more seeds. You want to make sure you keep enough seeds in there so that when you go to fill them, 
it's nice and easy. Drop them in, turn it to the side. You have your wand basically recharged with seeds. You would put in another level or another line, drop them in, and your seeds are planted. Pretty straightforward, and you just follow the instructions. It'll tell you what part of the handles of the wands to use for different seeds. Thanks for watching. Please check out the video description. I'll tell you more about SoPerfectSeeder.com. And I will see you next time. Good luck in your gardens. Have fun. Get out there and plant something.